welcome to Mythbusters. We're busting myths about Christianity. And I'm the Christian Education Director for the West Angeles Church. I'm glad you have joined me one more time. Well, today we're going to be busting the myth that's related to a phrase that all of us have heard. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Someone has asked us, where is that in the Bible? Well, you may not know this, but it's not in the Bible. That is not a verse in the Bible. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And it's common, there are many phrases like that that people think are in the Bible, but it's not in the Bible. In fact, I'm gonna use my notes here. Uh, it comes from an ancient Hebrew literary source. Uh, it's written by Phineas ben Yair, a rabbi in the ancient Hebrew writings called the Talmud, which come after the Bible. And this is the quotation. The doctrines of religion are resolved into carefulness, carefulness into vigorousness, vigorousness into abstemiousness. I didn't know what that word meant. I had to look that word up in the dictionary. Abstemiousness means to, uh, to not be given to alcoholic drink, to be temperate in your drinking and eating. So vigorousness into abstemiousness and abstemiousness into cleanliness and then here's the phrase, cleanliness into godliness. So cleanliness in this phrase is next to godliness. Well, but this term now comes into the English language, uh, godliness, cleanliness is next to godliness, from Francis Bacon, who was a philosopher and scientist. And in 1605, 1605 he wrote in his text, Advancement of Learning, quote, Cleanliness of body was ever deemed to proceed from a due reverence to God. And then, in 1791, 200 years later, John Wesley made reference of this, the great preacher John Wesley made reference to this in the expression in one of his sermons where he said, slovenliness, quote, slovenliness is no part of religion. Cleanliness is indeed next to godliness. So the great preacher who started the Methodist church, John Wesley, is the one where we really get the phrase from. It's not in the Bible. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And, but you know, why is this important? I mean, we've all heard that phrase. Uh, I heard even people say cleanliness is godliness. Well, it does have something to do with the Bible in this sense that the Bible is very clear concerned with moral cleanliness or purity. And in the Old Testament in particular, uh, we see that. Um, in Leviticus uh, 11, 44-45 says, I am the Lord your God, you shall have, you shall therefore consecrate yourselves and you shall be holy for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any creeping thing that creeps on the earth. For I am the Lord who brings you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy for I am holy. So we know these are the words of the Lord to Israel. And we know that in uh, the Old Testament, uh, there was a great concern with uh, moral cleanliness and actually physical cleanliness. And there were things that you know, Israel could do and could not do food they could eat, they could not eat. And so this idea of cleanliness and actual physical cleanliness and purity went together. And uh, if you look at uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 19, the whole chapter is on the laws of purification. And so it was a great concern in the Old Testament, God's law in the Old Testament, uh, that the people could do certain things, could not do certain things, had to be clean etc etc so in that case cleanliness uh, was very important in godliness but now let's come to the New Testament in the New Testament cleanliness or or godliness has nothing to do with outward cleanliness in fact uh, Jesus makes it clear that pe people are defiled by what's in their hearts and not by whether what they eat or the washing of their hands uh, it says here when he called the multitude of himself to hear and understand, he said, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what goes out of the mouth that defiles a man. So Jesus is concerned with cleanliness, but he's concerned with inner cleanliness. But how do we get inwardly clean? 
And that is only by faith in Jesus Christ. For when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, our sins have been washed away by what he did for us on the cross. And when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, the Bible says we become justified before God. God sees us as having right standing before him because we have trusted in Jesus dying on the cross, paying for the, the, the filth of our sins, and we gain the cleanliness of his righteousness, which is totally a gift that is given by faith in Jesus. So I hope that today, if you haven't put your trust in Jesus Christ, that you will believe in him, that you will believe that God took care of your sins on the cross when Jesus died on that cross, and that you will believe that and believe in Jesus Christ, and you will receive true cleanliness, true purity by the blood of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you next time on Theology Thursdays.